She claimed it on Dr. Phil's show. She's claimed it for 26 years. That's all she got to eat. And then for six months, she never went to the bathroom. Now, would you believe that? The Big Fat Liar. What do you think? Want to see it? Praise God. You know, today I just want to talk about a few things and then I want to read uh, something that someone had sent to us which we thought was very good because we have over the years read a lot of letters that we have received from people around the world and many times you know God's people are beautiful what I mean by that is their reaction to God their reaction to the Spirit of God the way that they receive the message of Christ Jesus and the way that they grab hold of deliverance when they are needy of being set free of demon oppression in their lives and the way that they receive the truth it's um, in many instances magnificent to behold so over the years we have read uh, letters that have come in among ourselves or I've read them out in order for us to see what God is doing is very inspiring now this particular thing here uh, has come to us for our consideration and in considering it it brings up very interesting points that we think are valid and are aspects that are actually enlightening if you just settle down and see what this person is trying to say and receive it in the light that not everybody's as, as dull and dumb as the secular media would like us to believe now as um, my husband and Colonel Philip have reviewed certain aspects of the latest slander that is being aimed at us as a ministry and as the people of God and the representatives of God's kingdom they have brought out you know their um, points that they wanted to discuss or to bring forth to us today but in this there's something that I want to say and that is that whatever we do towards God is returned to us and at this point in my life I can say that God is good to me and I can say that his mercies are ever present I can say that he is my deliverer and he has delivered me of many forces of darkness that came into my life not only through uh, bloodline demons I am uh, a large percentage of Native American blood and I had a lot of uh, spirits inherited from that and God set me free and now I have a very flourishing and active ministry with Native Americans and I'm very thankful for that because um, I could never have worked among them if God had not freed me of the demon powers that hold them in bondage so I'm thankful for deliverance in that aspect of my life I'm also thankful that God took me up as a lost and perishing dying sinner I was a byproduct of the hippie revolution I was you might say at the end of the road when Jesus Christ had mercy upon me and from that lifestyle I had many demons in me that I coexisted with for 10 years as a Christian until God brought my husband and myself into the ministry of deliverance and the knowledge that even as Christian believers that we could carry around spirits that we needed to be set free of now most Christians in America are too proud to face that reality but uh, fortunately God gave us when he gave us that insight enough humility to admit that yes we were vexed and tormented many times by these demonic powers that had come into our life by the wanton lifestyle we had lived in the days of our youth under the era of the hippie revolution now those things are things we had repented of we did not act out the demonic suggestions but once we received the deliverance we were set free no longer were we under mental oppression physical oppression but God gave us deliverance through Jesus Christ the Lord and we were able to see the difference in our lives as Christians and we were able to grow and develop in areas that we were hindered by the demon spirits so I'm not ashamed to admit that I am a person who has greatly benefited from the ministry of deliverance and I still believe in deliverance ministry I still believe in the casting out of demon spirits and I still pray for others to be set free from demonic bondages now there are people that make the accusations that my husband and I uh, see the world as either the devil or God well read your Bible read your Bible and you will find out that God the Father sees the world as either good or evil huh 
because we have the very first instance of Adam and Eve and what did they do? They chose what the devil told them. They gave in to the impulse, to the influence and they brought the whole entity of sin to humankind. So even though someone may have a PhD doctorate after their name and be able to say well they're obviously crazy because they believe that things are either of God or the devil or good or evil. They are. They are. And if Americans would face the realities that many of our brothers and sisters around the world have faced a long time ago in terms of spirits, good and bad, American Christians would be a far stronger body of believers. But because they have believed they're so good, they're already perfect, and because they have uh, middle class surroundings and middle class setups in their churches, and now even mega churches, they think they have arrived, they're full of demons. And you say, well, how can you say that with my mouth? Hmm? And with the knowledge that God has given me over the years, the wisdom that I have accumulated from staying steadfast with God, not turning to demons, not turning to idols, not bowing to Buddhas, but bowing still to Jesus Christ as my Lord. So, with that said and done, I want to read this thing that we received. And the individual here, and I personally don't think that it's just one person's input. I think it might be a conglomerate. But it came to us and it was called Analytical Considerations by WBC Analyst. And this person, whoever it is, says sources various internet and media reports. Okay, I'm going to read this. You can make of it what you will. It says in the times we are in, more and more people are being bi diagnosed as bipolar, having two personalities at work in the same individual. Years ago, the favorite diagnosis, which was descriptive of the same behavioral patterns, was schizophrenic, which migrated into manic depressive. Now the favorite term for the same bondage is bipolar. Well, as we know, the name of the game these days is pharmacopoeia utopia, whereby the entire nation is on meds. Now that's true. All these uh, murders that are supposedly being done by these young people, mostly young men, um, their psychological history turns up they are on meds, which is nothing but hardcore drugs put out by pharmaceutical companies say and then it says now these titles given by men to these behaviors exhibited by the victims are simply names for and this word is in parentheses demons which inhabit people and cause them to exhibit certain behavioral patterns from data reviewed in this analysis a very good case study in point is more Schmier, who appears from research materials available to have always had problems with bitterness, accusation, hatred, lying, and an assortment of other, parentheses, demonic inspired behaviors, which she has carried as a part of her personality for many years. Basically, in the perspective of bipolar orientation, she is a pathological antagonist towards those she imagines have wronged her. Mrs. Schmier has a history of broken, fragmented relationships. She had numerous broken relationships with male partners before she ever met and eventually married Stephen Schmier. Mrs. Schmier, in fact, has five children by three different fathers. She has always managed by the motivation of the bipolar influences that she is under to come out as the one who is the victim. Now we know that person's got a very good point there, or persons, because this is the emphasis of the Dr. Phil show. This is the emphasis of the National Geographic uh, falsehood. This is the emphasis now of the biography, bio liar episode, is that she is the victim. Okay, then it says here, now more and more counselors and psychoanalysts are coming to greater understanding these days. It is being more thoroughly understood in these behaviors that the victims are often the victimizers who blame others for their pathetic states of being. 
So in other words, I was held captive. They held me captive. They did all this to me. When really, if you read, as my husband has addressed the issue and shown the publications of the PX2 files, Mrs. Schmier's remaining in the Fort Freedom facility during the time that she and her husband's marriage was going, you might say, on the rocks, that she was asked to leave at that time and then she came back begging to stay and saying she didn't care how she had to live, she wanted to remain there. Now, she was given whatever facilities were available and those facilities were in the city. There was electricity, there was heat, there was water, there was toilet. It's all a made up story, but it's the victim. Now, more and more counselors and psychoanalysts are coming to greater understanding these days it is being more thoroughly understood in these behaviors that the victims are often the victimizers who blame others for their pathetic states of being. When in reality, these victims who are victimizers are the ones who literally invite their so-called troubles by their helpless, leech-oriented behavioral problems. Take care of me. I can't deal with my kids. I can't deal with my husband. I can't deal with my own life. Take care of me. Okay? Then it says, then they bitterly accuse the so-called bad, bad guys, demonstrating their pathological antagonism that brought their imagined tragedies into their lives. Okay, my husband and I, for the last 25 years, have been labeled the bad guys. Okay, by this woman who this analyst has got the number of. Then it says, oftentimes, these patterns develop in childhood and continue to be lifelong patterns if the victim is never released from the demonic control which ultimately motivates and activates these behavioral patterns. Such patterns greatly restrict and inhibit the person from ever coming out of the victim status into an acceptance of their own responsibility and accountability. Instead, they choose to use psychoterrorism against their imagined oppressors, while all the time the behavior they exhibit is inviting the so-called oppressors into their lives. Okay? Therefore, they can remain the wounded child forever and likewise be the victim who can forever hold others responsible for every sorrow, hardship, suffering, or bad time real or imagined in their lives. Mrs. Schmier is a classic wounded child victim case personality type. She has, in her own imagination and lying behavioral mode, built up a fantasy of an escape from what she terms to be an evil cult. Her departure was literally because she was told to leave, which was in reality quite different from the tale she tells. Her fabricated tale is told to elicit pity, hatred, and anger against the so-called bad guys who were a part of her adult life for less than five years. Now just as a side note, this woman is 65 years old. She's not young, she's not fragile, she's not vulnerable. We did not crush her psyche. She went on to take all the money that she got from ACMTC in her fabulous lawsuit and gain for herself a education and a career as a nurse. She managed to buy with her proceeds from the lawsuit, which she stole from her brothers and sisters in Christ, buy herself several pieces of real estate and invest and reinvest, I'm sure with the help of her good buddy, Bob Lazier, the attorney who taught her the schemes of her dreams. But the point I'm getting to is she did not end up as a crushed, immobile, helpless, psychotic, well, we don't know about that factor, uh, individual. But Mrs. Victim managed to pull her private life together. But somehow, the Greens are still to blame. So, there's some points here this person or persons put in that are pretty important. And then it says, uh, by the way, after she was put out of ACMTC, she gravitated to another Christian ministry where they sympathized with her tale of woe until she left that group 
within a span of less than five years. Upon her departure from there, she was again angry, accusatory, bitter and hateful towards the second Christian ministry that had nothing to do with the Greens whatsoever. So we see here the victim is again victimized, but is really the victimizer. And the poor little me, the helpless child that was so abused and held captive and fed peanut butter went on down the road and pulled another stunt. Okay? Now, having been raised in the Roman Catholic Church, Mrs. Schmier could possibly be a classic wounded child by molestation or other transgressions accomplished by authority figures against her as a child. Now that's a good suggestion. It's a possibility that she has long-term psychological problems. Perhaps she was molested by her priest. Only God knows. Then it goes on and it says, from the beginning of her relationship with the Greens, she always expressed great bitterness against her father, another authority figure. In her mind, he was to blame for everything she had done wrong in life. Now remember that she had two, possibly three, I, I'm not sure of that fact, children out of wedlock. That was her father's fault too. After she was told to leave ACMTC by James and Deborah Lila Green, then they, they then became the victims of her hateful and bitter accusation patterns continually displayed against them through her pathological antagonism. It says they became subject to her victimizing techniques at uh, the time she was asked to leave ACMTC to get a job and learn responsibility in her life. The great victim began to angrily victimize the Greens and hold them accountable for all of her personality flaws and relationship failures in life. She even chose to victimize the Greens and three other individuals in a $20 million lawsuit that she and her swindler lawyer Bob Blazier thought up in the late 1980s. Through the means of media hype and the wounded victimized child role played by Mora, she and her close friend attorney Bob Blazier skyrocketed to fame clinging to the coattails of the so-called evil cult leaders Jim and Deborah Lila Green. To hear Amora tell her victim story, the Holocaust victims suffered nothing compared to her. Her bipolar personalities have shown themselves manifest several times over the years as she continues through various forms of biogenesis, mainly the secular media, to express various sentiments regarding her whole so-called imprisonment. The reality was simply she and her husband were in a marriage breakup. She had nowhere to go to stay. She was given by the leadership of ACMTC a lengthy season to repent on the possibility that the marriage could be restored and she could resume many of the duties she had neglected to do during her time with ACMTC. Moore's story is absurd to anyone who listens to it without preconceived prejudice and can differentiate between truth and fiction. It becomes evident that she is definitely bipolar in her fragmented tale of imprisonment. Yet her own handwritten letters cry out from a period of her life when she is claiming to experience visit, visit visions and visitations to hell depicted in completely Catholic perceptions. Also during her so-called imprisonment she is patterning herself after Catholic women whose books she read repeatedly, one of whom was a nun and the other a devout Catholic woman. Both these women live strict, austere lives of denial and self-sacrifice. But being an inherent narcissist, narcissist, the latter was a difficult role for her and her fluctuations to the polar, to that polar did not last long. However, to hear her tell this story and later backed up by her first child, her daughter born out of wedlock, who is now also a victim. According to Mora, she was forced into isolation and suffered many rigors of existence that were unbelievable. Of course, under scr scrutiny, her fabricated tale appears to be full of lies and conjecture. As Mrs. Schmier continues in her saga, her ex-husband tells an entirely different side to this story, as he has remained a faithful Christian for over 30 years and has remained an active member of ACMTC. Her ex-husband claims he received help 
through the ministry of deliverance from demons in his life and will testify till this day that he is a liberated soul set free by the power of God and willing to serve Jesus day by day. He regrets that his former wife chose to oppose the deliverance that was made available to them both and has gone on, and this is a quote, gone on to become a slanderous, gossiping, bitter old woman who still rejects the mercy of Jesus offered through deliverance. He believes that she carries, another quote, a double portion of the demons she already had as she refused the Lord's hand of mercy in her life through the deliverance, casting out of demons ministry and the loving care of Generals Jim and Deborah Lila Green. Through the victim's own choices, she has solidified herself in bitterness, hatred, anger, and of course, self-pity. She has chosen to remain the victim and has chosen to victimize the Greens and others through lawsuits, false media reports, various slanderous TV appearances, and personal interviews, as well as internet gossip and slander. She now aligns herself with a female Buddhist monk who has chosen a life of self-sacrifice, the farthest thing from Mora's abundant middle-class lifestyle whereby she makes money off of her continual slander against the Greens. She is obviously a very mentally ill individual whose manipulative powers rest in her complete, helpless, and victimized condition that supposedly happened 25 years ago in her life. For that many years, she has clung to her tale of falsehood, which, is in, which increases in horror each time she tells it. Perhaps it would do her good to seek psychological help to get counseling for her brainwashed, victimized state, and of course, medications for her bipolar, parenthesis, schizophrenic mental condition, since she refused the ministry of deliverance from the bipolar demons which rule her life. Then it says, as the saying goes, Mora get a life. So on that, I think there's a lot there that needs to be considered in this person uh, or persons sent this in said analytical considerations. And you know, we need to consider things. I know from the National Geographic show, the channel, and what they have put up there, that we have received what we deserve. And I say, praise God. Because God is giving us what we deserve, and he's giving us mercy, he's giving us truth, he's giving us life, he gives us his spirit, and he gives us his direction every single day. And as believers in Christ Jesus, remaining so, hopefully till the day that we are taken to him, that we can say we believe in him, we trust in him as our savior, as our deliverer, as the one that we love, the one that we will serve and obey.